Chapter 26 The End is the Beginning Tommy woke up with a pounding headache. Blinking open, crusted over eyes, he was just able to make out his familiar ceiling and could feel soft sheets wrapped around his body. Everything ached. All of his muscles were sore, his head was throbbing, and even the act of opening his eyes was starting to exhaust him. It felt like he'd been run over by a car, but not just once. It felt like he'd gotten run over, and then the car reversed to run over him a second time, and then it drove forward again to hit him a third time as well, just for good measure. Suffice to say, he felt like shit. His mind was groggy as he tried to think back on what had happened. They had been going to meet with Dream, and then 404 had tried to throw knives at them, and then Dream stabbed Will. Oh. Bolting upright in his bed, Tommy hissed as the movement sent a huge spike of pain through his head, and squeezed his eyes shut as he brought his hands up to his temples. Tommy? A familiar voice said. Dad? Tommy mumbled, without thinking, keeping his eyes shut. There was a beat of silence, and Tommy could have sworn he heard Phil sniffle. Then, Hey, Toms. Suddenly, there was a warm hand wrapping around his wrist, and Tommy blinked open his eyes again to see his father. Phil was sitting on the chair next to his bed much like Tubbo and Ronbu had been doing when Tommy had first woken up after being kidnapped. He moved his hand down Tommy's wrist to gently squeeze his hand, and Tommy could see there were dark bags under his eyes. How are you feeling? Phil asked, giving him a warm smile, despite his eyes glittering like they were full of tears. Tommy opened his mouth to answer, but paused when he remembered what else happened before he passed out. The alley trying to keep Wilbur from bleeding out, trying to shake him awake and begging him not to be dead. That blinding light and the fire racing through his veins, his own screams echoing in his ears. Where's Wilbur? Tommy asked, ripping his hand out of Phil's. Is he okay? Did he... I mean, I thought that I... He's okay. Phil cut him off, resting a hand on his shoulder. Tommy took a shaky breath, as he remembered what it was like to try and shake Wilbur awake, only for him to sit there, completely limp. Ah, oh, I thought he... I could have sworn he... He cut himself off this time, a choked sob bubbling up in his throat. Are you sure he's okay? He asked Phil, tears now swimming in his eyes. He's all right, Tommy. You saved his life. Phil reassured him, squeezing his shoulder. He's alive because of you. Where is he? Tommy asked, looking around his room and realizing he and Phil were the only people in it. I, I need to see him. He needed to get the mental image of Wilbur's dead body out of his head. He needed proof that his brother was alive. He's in his room. Before Phil could finish his sentence, Tommy pushed the blankets back to try and climb out of bed. But when he put his feet on the ground, the minute he tried to shift his weight onto his legs, they started shaking so badly he couldn't even find it in him to stand up. Fuck, why am I so weak? Tommy hissed, gritting his teeth as he tried to force his body to cooperate. You really overexerted yourself, Phil told him, standing up and pushing him back down onto the bed. Don't try to get up. Techno can carry you. I don't need techno, Phil called out, cutting Tommy off. Can you come here? From the hallway outside his door, Tommy heard another door open. Then there were shuffling footsteps and techno appeared in his doorway. As soon as techno saw Tommy was awake, there was a drop in his shoulders, and something like relief flickered through his face. Good to see you're awake, Apollo. Distantly. Tommy remembered Techno snarling at Dream not to touch his brothers. Brothers. Plural. If he wasn't so worried about Wilbur, Tommy would have made some comment about it. But at that moment, he only had one thing on his mind. Everything else could wait. 
He wants to go see Will, but he can't stand. Phil explained for him. Since Will isn't really up for getting out of bed either, can you carry him? Tommy frowned. I don't need to be carried. You literally just tried to stand and couldn't, Phil reminded him. Trust me, Tommy. You're like carrying a bag of grapes. It's not a big deal. Techno told him as he approached the bed. While Tommy wanted to argue that he was fucking fine and didn't need to be carried like a baby, anxiety was still buzzing in his chest the more he thought about Wilbur. The more he fought, the longer it would take to get proof that Wilbur was okay. So he had to just suck up his embarrassment for the time being and accept the help. Fine. Take me to him. Tommy said, reaching his arms up at Techno. Huffing, Techno leaned down and scooped his arms under Tommy's legs and back. There was no grunting or struggle as Techno hoisted Tommy up, and Tommy found himself leaning into Techno's chest as Phil opened the door to his room for them. The constant bouncing with every step Techno took made Tommy's already pounding head spin even more, so he squeezed his eyes shut and hid his face in Techno's chest as they made their way out to the hallway. It was only a few steps across the hall into Wilbur's room. Ignoring the nausea rolling over him, Tommy forced himself to open his eyes when they stepped through the next doorway. Wilbur's room looked exactly the same as it had before they'd left for the meeting. Messy as hell. But now Tommy could see some blood-stained clothes shoved into the far corner, and some extra bandages sitting on his nightstand. But Tommy barely paid attention to that. Instead, as soon as he met a familiar pair of warm brown eyes, Tommy's heart leapt into his throat. Hey, Toms. Wilbur said softly, giving him a small smile. Wilbur was propped up in his bed, with several puffy pillows supporting his back. He was pale, with deep bags sitting under his eyes. He looked just as bad as Tommy felt. But there was one part of his appearance, in particular, that caught Tommy's eyes. Will. Tommy whispered, as Techno set him on the bed, staring at Wilbur's hair. Why the hell is there white in your hair? Most of Wilbur's hair was the same chocolate brown as it had always been, but one of the curls that fell right in front of his face was now a stark white, reminiscent of snow. Wilbur huffed out a weak laugh. I'm not sure, but I think it happened when you brought me back to life. Tommy blinked, the realization setting in. He had brought Wilbur back to life, hadn't he? Wilbur hadn't been breathing. His heart had stopped pumping blood. Tommy wasn't supposed to be able to heal things that were dead, and yet he'd managed to force his powers to work on Wilbur. That was... something to work out for another time, when his head wasn't pounding like a jackhammer. Before Tommy could really try to formulate his thoughts into a response, suddenly Wilbur was leaning forward in the bed and grabbing a strand of Tommy's own hair. But look, Wilbur said, tugging a bit of Tommy's own curls down his forehead so he could see. We're matching. Sure enough, the strand of hair Wilbur had grasped in his fingers wasn't gold like the rest of his hair. It was pure white, just like Wilbur's. Tommy went cross-eyed staring at it for a moment, before Wilbur let go and leaned back against his pillows again. Tommy stared blankly at his brother for a moment. He took in the white streak in Wilbur's hair, the paleness of his skin, the way he was giving Tommy a shy smile, like he was happy to see him, but worried at the same time. Wilbur was here. He was sitting right in front of him, looking a bit worse for wear, but breathing all the same. Without thinking, Tommy scooted forward on the bed until he was right next to Wilbur. Then, with trembling hands, he brought up his fingers to Wilbur's throat, right where his pulse was. There, underneath his skin, his pulse was thudding in a steady thump, thump, thump. Not like before. The pulse was real. It was there. Smile fading, Wilbur brought a hand up to cover the hand Tommy had on his neck. I'm alive, he whispered, squeezing his hand lightly. I'm not going anywhere, I promise. 
And that... That was the straw that broke the camel's back. A sob tore out of his throat, and Tommy lunged for his brother, wrapping his arms around him and burying his face in his warm shoulder. Wilbur immediately tugged him close, and although Tommy knew Phil and Techno were still in the room watching this all go down, he couldn't bring it in himself to care. It worked. Somehow, Tommy had done the impossible and brought Wilbur back to life. Wilbur's arms were tight around his shoulders, and Tommy sobbed as a million emotions flooded through his mind. His fear, his pain, his grief, his relief, his anger. There was so much washing over him at once. Tommy could hear Wilbur's siren voice in his head again, the soft echo of his command to not let Tommy heal him. Suddenly, overcome with white-hot rage, Tommy pulled back from the hug, facing Wilbur with tear-streaked cheeks. Are you a- Before Wilbur could finish that sentence, Tommy brought his hand up and slapped Wilbur across the face as hard as he could. A deafening smack echoed through the room. There were a few beats of silence after Wilbur's head snapped to the side, a red handprint quickly forming on his cheek. Then, Yeah, I think I deserved that. Wilbur muttered. You're such a fucking idiot! Tommy yelled, the relief and anger swirling inside of him to create a strange mix of emotions that he could barely process. I can't believe you fucking used your voice to keep me from healing you! You did what? Phil cut in, while Techno let out an alarmed, huh? Sighing, Wilbur lifted his head back up, not dropping his arms from where they were still wrapped around Tommy. I... I don't really have a good excuse for that. Yeah, you fucking don't! Tommy hissed, more hot tears streaming down his face. We talked about this, Wilbur. You aren't a fucking martyr. I know, and it was a fucking stupid thing of me to do. Wilbur said, pulling Tommy back down to his shoulder. Tommy didn't try to fight it. He curled closer to Wilbur hiding his face in his sweater as the mental image of Wilbur's dead body just kept flashing in his mind. You're such a fucking idiot, Tommy repeated, his voice muffled by fabric. I am, I know. Wilbur agreed, bringing a hand up to card through Tommy's hair. I was just... I was so out of it from blood loss, and I could hear Dream coming down the street. I knew I couldn't defend you anymore and I just wanted you to get out of there before he showed up, so I thought if I made it so you couldn't heal me, you would run. You were wrong. I'd never leave you like that. Tommy told him, not bothering to lift his head. Yeah, I realize that now, Wilbur said, letting out a humorless laugh. I should have known you'd pull something like learning how to revive the dead just to save my sorry ass. Tommy still had no idea how he did that and he wasn't sure he'd ever know. But it had worked, and that was what mattered the most. That Wilbur was here now, and Tommy could yell at him for being a fucking asshole. That he was alive, and hugging Tommy, and Tommy was able to keep his family intact. Wait. Phil suddenly cut in, and Tommy felt the bed dip as Phil sat on the edge. You used your voice to tell Tommy not to heal you? Although Tommy didn't lift his head, he could imagine Wilbur's sheepish look. Um, yeah. I know that healing would make Tommy too tired to run from Dream, and he was getting too close to the alley we were hiding in. So in my I've-just-been-stabbed delirium, I thought it was a good idea to just make it so he couldn't heal me so he'd leave me behind. Wilbur explained. Techno made a sound of disapproval. You shouldn't have done that. Yeah, I fucking know. Wilbur hissed, sounding a little impatient. I'm not gonna pull shit like that again. Believe it or not, death wasn't exactly a fun experience that I'd like to go through again. Frowning, Tommy lifted his head from Wilbur's shoulder just the tiniest bit so he could see his face. Why, you remember it? The annoyance faded from Wilbur's face at Tommy's soft question, and he nodded as his eyes glazed over. It's fuzzy, but I remember... 
there was a train station. And I just... I was so fucking lonely down there, standing on an empty platform, waiting for a train I knew would never come. Sounds more like a limbo than an afterlife. Techno commented. Maybe. Wilbur shrugged, gently pushing Tommy's head back down so he could continue to run his fingers through his hair. All I know is that eventually, a train stopped, and Tommy was on it. I was? Tommy frowned, not having experienced anything like that. Wilbur snorted. You were. You didn't talk, but you just scowled at me and yanked me onto the train. Next thing I knew, I was waking up here. That was strange. Tommy didn't experience anything like that. But he had to admit, that didn't sound like a very pleasant afterlife. And you're not going to do anything like that again, Phil said, huffing a bit. Yeah, I won't, Wilbur reassured. Like I said, I don't really want to see that train station again. Good, Tommy grumbled, readjusting so he was no longer hidden in Wilbur's shoulder, but had his head resting on Wilbur's chest. Underneath his head, he could hear the steady thump, thump, thump of Wilbur's heart, and it eased the lingering anxiety he still had. Now that Tommy knew that Wilbur was alive, the panic racing in his veins finally eased up enough for his thoughts to clear. Wilbur was okay, which meant that now Tommy had something else to worry about. So, Tommy started, drawing all eyes back to him. What happened with the dream? Although no one seemed particularly upset or worried, which made him want to believe things had worked out, they might have just been more focused on Wilbur for the time being, and pushed the problems with Dream to the side. Phil and Techno shared a silent look, before Phil sighed and folded his hands together. Well, he's not going to be a problem anymore. At least not to you. Phil told him giving him a reassuring smile. Basically, after you and Will left the fight, Puffy and I did our best to subdue him. Eventually, Puffy managed to get him pinned, and she gave him an ultimatum. Apparently, she had pictures of Dream's face. So either she would show us, the syndicate, his face, or he had to make a deal with her. What was the deal? Tommy asked, furrowing his brows. Since she already agreed to stand by if he released the video footage, that meant his blackmail was useless. So she made him promise that from this point forward, everything would go back to the way it was before you started healing for us. Dream basically has to leave our healer alone. And in turn, we have to leave Supreme alone as well, although we never targeted him in the first place. Healers need to be considered neutral. And he can't use your civilian identity against you. Phil explained, not looking all too pleased at the explanation. Wait, so you didn't kill him? Tommy asked, having fully expected that to be the news he heard. I wanted to. Techno growled. But Puffy wouldn't let me. Yeah, she wouldn't let anyone kill him, which I wasn't super thrilled about. Phil shrugged, his wings shifting with the movement. But Puffy is a good friend of mine, so I respected her wishes about this whole thing. She promised that if he ever pulls this kind of shit against you again, she'll handle him. For some strange reason that Tommy couldn't pin, he was actually... relieved? Despite everything Dream had put him through, there had been a lingering knot of worry in his chest that Dream would be dead. While he knew he had no reason to feel bad for Dream, given the fact that the hero had literally kidnapped him and tried to throw him in jail, Tommy just couldn't stand the idea of knowing that he was the reason for Dream's death. Thank you. Tommy murmured, relaxing further into Wilbur's hold. I'm really glad you didn't kill him. Thank Puffy, not us. Techno grunted. This made Tommy snort. You're right. Puffy is the real hero here. She gets all the credit. To be fair, she kind of does. Techno told him with a shrug. If Phil hadn't managed to convince her to come out of retirement, we would have been screwed. Wait. Wilbur cut in suddenly. You never explained that to us, Phil. Why did you keep me and Tommy out of the loop for the plan? Ducking his head, Phil laughed awkwardly. <laughs> well, it wasn't anything against you two. 
It was more that I just wasn't sure if Puffy was going to end up agreeing to come out of retirement for this, so I didn't want to get hopes up. I also didn't think it was fair to ask her for something as huge as this, and then go, by the way, if you say no, Tommy will know you could have helped him and you didn't. Well, Tommy makes sense, but what about me? Wilbur pushed, frowning at Phil. Because you're petty as fuck, and would have been pissed at Puffy if she said no. Phil explained, with a flat stare. Tommy let out a startled laugh at this. It was true. Wilbur was petty as fuck. But Wilbur didn't seem to agree. I'm not petty. You are too, Tommy said, shifting his head so he was looking up at Wilbur's face. Wilbur scowled. No, I'm not, you brat. You literally are. Huffing, the white streak in Wilbur's hair fell over his eyes again, and Tommy paused to pull down his own matching one again. It was almost like that night never happened. Like it was all just a bad dream, because now Wilbur and Tommy were both here, alive and well. But the hair was evidence that it wasn't a dream. That all that had been real. Smile fading. Tommy twirled the white in his hair around his finger while the others quieted down. So, is it over then? He asked after a few minutes, glancing between Wilbur, Phil, and Techno's faces. Are we okay now? Am I going to be able to stay with you? Was his silent question. Reaching out, Phil pushed Tommy's hair back from his face, and Tommy immediately leaned into the gentle touch. Yeah, it's over, Tommy. Phil reassured him. You're home now, and we're going to make sure it stays that way. As Phil ran his fingers through Tommy's hair, Wilbur rubbed small circles into his shoulder blade, and Techno flashed him a small but wholly genuine smile. Well, Tommy found himself believing every word of what Phil said. He was home. Holy shit, this place is awesome! Walking through Tubbo and Ronboo's new apartment, Tommy gaped at how big the place was, and how much nicer it smelled compared to their last apartment. I know, right? We kept telling Phil we don't need a place this nice, but he really thought we'd like this one best. Ronboo told him, running his hand along the unstained white wall. The new apartment sat on the border between South Bay and Eastside. It was in a new building, meaning no one had actually lived in this unit, until now. Once Tubbo and Ronboo had accepted the offer of joining the syndicate, Phil's first order of business had been to make sure the boys had a decent place to live, waving off any arguments as it being part of their salary, despite the fact that syndicate members didn't really have salaries. Now here they were, standing in the middle of an apartment that Phil had completely bought outright for the boys. There was one wall with floor-to-ceiling windows that faced out onto the city's skyline, letting in so much fresh sunlight Tommy felt like he could just lay on the floor and fall asleep in the warmth like a cat. Everything in the apartment was new, save for the few things the boys had wanted to keep from their old place. Amidst the plush furniture and shining countertops, Tubbo's old computer was shoved into a corner, a mess of wires falling over the hardwood floors in a clump that you couldn't pay Tommy to try and untangle. Ronboo's DS was settled on the coffee table, and Tommy's favorite sweatshirt had been tossed over the back of their new couch. It was strange, seeing these little bits of their old home in this shiny new place. It granted a sense of familiarity, but at the same time, it felt foreign. Like if Tommy spilled something, some rich person was going to rush out of the closet and yell at him. That didn't mean any of the trio disliked it. Quite the opposite, in fact. Tubbo had already made himself comfortable on the couch, while Ronboo was digging through the fridge to see what kind of food Techno had stocked it up with. It's all potatoes, Ronboo announced after a few minutes of searching, closing the fridge door with a sigh. You've got to be fucking kidding me, Tommy scoffed, rushing over to take a look for himself. Cold air blasted Tommy as he swung the fridge door open. Sure enough, while there were a few essentials like eggs and milk, most of the shelves were lined with microwavable meals of mashed potatoes or potato pancakes. 
God damn it, Techno. Tommy huffed, slamming the door shut again. It's fine, we'll just go grocery shopping to get some other stuff. Rambu said, not seeming all that annoyed about the copious amount of starch in their fridge. It's so weird to remember we can just do that now. Tubbo chimed in, sitting upright on the couch so he could look at Tommy and Ronbu. Like, it's still taking a bit to sink in that we don't have to budget so hard for food anymore. That was another one of Phil's conditions for the two boys to join the syndicate. Not only did they get a nicer place to live, they now had an entire spending account to use for whatever they needed. Of course, Tubbo and Rambu had both already insisted they would only use it for food, but Tommy doubted Phil would care if they bought themselves an Xbox with it or something. Have you guys gotten all your clothes and stuff moved over yet? Tommy asked, eyeing the suitcases still sitting in front of the front door. Tubbo groaned, while Ronbu chuckled. Yeah, we have them here, but we haven't unpacked anything yet. I fucking hate unpacking shit, Tubbo complained, flopping back down on the couch. I think we all do, Tubbo, Rambu pointed out, leaning against the counter. But it's probably a good idea to hold off, at least until you move your stuff over too, Tommy. Tommy froze. Shit, yeah. The reason he'd come over to the apartment today in the first place. He had to figure out how to break the news to them. While Tommy knew it wasn't something he should feel guilty about, he couldn't help the ache that echoed over his chest every time he thought over his decision. It wasn't that he wanted to put distance between himself and his best friends, but he just... He had other family he wanted to live with, too. Ronbu noticed the way Tommy's face fell at his comment, and immediately pushed off the counter to stand in front of him. Are you all right? He asked softly. Um, I'm fine, but I just... I wanted to talk to you guys about that, actually. Tommy said, eyes ducking to the ground. About the whole, uh, me moving thing. Let me guess. Tubbo cut in, climbing off the couch. You want to stay with the suits? Tommy winced, and forced himself to nod. Yeah. It's not that I care about them more than I care about you guys or anything. You're still my family and that's never going to change. But it's just... It's different, you know? Suddenly, a pair of warm hands were on his shoulders, and Tommy looked up to see Ronbu giving him a reassuring smile. Tommy, don't worry. We figured you were probably going to want to stay with them. Yeah, dude, Phil's literally filling out adoption paperwork for you. Tubbo snorted having joined the two standing to lean against Tommy's side. This isn't a surprise at all. But you're not upset? Tommy asked, glancing between the two of them. I mean, it's not like we're never going to see you again or anything. Tubbo huffed. You better be coming over to hang out all the damn time. Of course, Tommy exclaimed, horrified by the suggestion that he wouldn't want to hang out with his best friends anymore. I was already planning on staying over here a few nights a week anyway. At this, Ronbu chuckled. What, like a joint custody situation? Tommy flushed and shook his head. Not a joint custody situation, you dickhead. I don't know, Tommy. Tubbo teased, nudging his side with his elbow. If me and Ronbu get married, we could get into a custody battle with Phil for trying to adopt- Oh, fuck off. Tommy scoffed while Tubbo cackled at his own bad joke. If he keeps saying shit like that, I'm not going to come over to visit. Okay, fine, we'll stop, Rambu reassured, giving Tubbo a sharp look. Tubbo stopped laughing, but the shit-eating grin stayed on his face as he leaned back into Tommy's side. Seriously, though, we don't care if you want to keep living with Phil, Will, and Techno. Rambu nodded. Yep, I promise, we don't mind. Well, that was certainly a weight off his shoulders. Breathing a sigh of relief, Tommy slumped against Tubbo. Thanks, guys. Like I said, it's not like I'm going anywhere. Trust me, I'm not worried about that. You're way too clingy for that. Tubbo joked. I'm not clingy, Tommy protested. If anything, you're the clingy one. You are too, Tubbo shot back. You're so clingy you literally brought Wilbur back from the dead. 
he pointed out, reaching up to tug at Tommy's white streak. Tommy slapped his hand away from his hair. That's not being clingy. That's being so incredibly cool and poggers that I got the power to fucking revive someone. That's like ultimate clingy right there. Ronbu chimed in, smirking at Tommy. If I died, you'd definitely bring me back because you'd miss me way too much, Tubbo said, fluttering his lashes in a far too innocent way. Even though it was a joke, the mental image of Wilbur's dead body flashed behind his eyes again. Then, he imagined it being Tubbo instead. Tubbo lying too still, his eyes glassy and body limp. Bile rose in his throat. Don't joke about that. Tommy suddenly snapped, making Tubbo and Ronbu's laughter fall silent. And don't go dying thinking I can just bring you back either. I'm pretty sure that was a one-time thing with Will. Tommy couldn't explain why, but some part of him just knew that what he did with Wilbur was likely something he'd never be able to repeat. He didn't know if you'd explain it like an adrenaline rush or something of the sort, but somehow, he just knew that bringing someone back from the dead wasn't something he could do twice. So they had to stay safe. All of them. Both Ronbu and Tubbo's expressions turned somber as they shared a look. Sorry, I was just fucking around. Tubbo apologized. It's okay, Tommy muttered, resting his chin on top of Tubbo's head. I just don't like thinking about it. And that's okay, Ronbu reassured him, wrapping an arm around Tommy's shoulder so the three of them were in a group hug. You don't have to talk about it. Leaning further against his friends, Tommy sighed. Thanks, guys. Tommy would never be grateful enough for getting best friends as great as Tubbo and Ronbu. G2 slash M transition. Cell commitment to build the mitotic machinery requires that during slash by the end of G2 that the cell has fully replicated and repaired DNA. Cyclin A and cyclin B proteins are synthesized. Tommy stared at the notes on his page, the text blurring the more he tried to comprehend what the hell he'd actually written down. They were going over the stages of mitosis, and his head was already pounding from all the terms he knew he was going to have to memorize. On the one hand, Tommy really liked the idea of becoming a doctor, considering, well, he liked healing people. On the other hand, biology was really fucking complicated. Way more intense than he remembered it being in high school. But it was interesting to learn about the way cells worked at very small levels, and then try to apply that to the way his own powers worked. Although this was only the second college-level biology course he was taking, so far he'd theorized that his power probably did something along the lines of accelerating stem cell division over wounds. But he would have to research more before he could come up with a solid theory for it. For now, though, he was stuck focusing on the details of mitosis. It was late at night, and he was hunched over his desk, struggling to ingrain this shit into his memory. It was almost a relief when he noticed the purple particles floating behind his head. Rambu, what's up? Tommy asked, spinning around in his desk chair to face his friend. Standing in the middle of his room, Rambu was decked out in his full Ender outfit, his mask and goggles hiding whatever expression could be on his face right now. Sorry, I know you're studying, but, um, I was told to come get you. Rambu admitted, sounding sheepish. Tommy huffed, although he was secretly thrilled at having an excuse to ditch his studying. Who is it this time? He asked, hopping out of his chair to run to his dresser. It's Jack, Rambu told him, and Tommy rolled his eyes as he pulled his cargo pants out of his drawer. Of fucking course it is. Did he piss someone off again? Tommy asked, rushing into the bathroom to change. Yep. He taunted 404 and got a knife to the thigh. Ronbu sighed from outside the bathroom door. After changing into his cargo pants, Tommy checked the pockets, grinning when he saw he had remembered to stuff them full of bandages and gauze. Opening the door to the bathroom again, Tommy grabbed his mask off his bed and buckled the straps behind his head, before dropping to the ground to pull his boots on. How bad is it? Tommy asked 
his voice now tinged with metal from his voice changer as he laced up his boots. Not that bad. He's just complaining for the most part, Ronbu told him, leaning against the edge of his bed as he watched Tommy tie his shoes. Will is holding off 404 right now, while Nikki, Tubbo, and Techno focus on Dream and Rewind. Snorting, Tommy pushed to his feet again, doing one last check to make sure his mask was secure. I'm sure Will is thrilled about having to handle 404, he drawled sarcastically, reaching his hand out towards Ronbu. Ronbu wrapped his hand around Tommy's. You ready? Ronbu asked. Tommy grinned. You know it. Next thing Tommy knew, his stomach was swooping out from underneath him. Everything went black, and Tommy's head spun as he gripped onto Ronbu's hand for dear life. And then, he was stumbling onto a gravel rooftop. He could hear yelling all around, and after shaking himself off to get the ringing out of his ears, he paused to glance up and look around. It was like Ronbu had said. Nikki and Tubbo were tag-teaming Rewind as he disappeared and reappeared as he jumped between seconds, while Wilbur was struggling to dodge 404's knives like he always was. Then, Tommy noticed Techno and Dream going toe-to-toe, and while there was still a small spike of fear that shot through him seeing Dream's smiley face mask again, he knew at this point that Dream was going to stay true to his word. Many months had passed since the night they had their confrontation with Dream, and it had been harder than he thought to readjust to his normal life after things calmed down. Sometimes, Tommy would still wake up and wonder if he was actually awake, or if this was all some giant trick on his mind, and he was actually sitting in a jail cell right now. For the first month after everything had blown over, Tommy's palms were constantly glowing to heal the small wounds he'd created by pinching himself. But the windows had always been clear, and his reality had proved itself again and again and again. This was real. He could trust that. Tugging him by the hand, Ronbu led him to the edge of the roof, where Jack was still pressed up against the railing with a hand on his leg. Hey up, man, Tommy greeted as he kneeled down in front of Jack, waving Ronbu off as he jumped back into the fight. Hey up, Jack muttered through gritted teeth. Eyeing the knife sticking out of Jack's thigh, he pulled back the fabric of his pants to get a better look at it, and Jack winced at the pressure. This looks like it hurts like a bitch. It fucking does, Jack hissed. Can you hurry up and fucking pull it out? Rolling his eyes, Tommy nodded. I will if you promise not to be a little bitch about it. I'm not gonna... Before Jack could finish his sentence, Tommy yanked the knife out of his thigh, causing Jack to let out a rather unmanly-sounding shriek. Fucking hell! Tossing the knife to the side, Tommy ignored Jack's string of curses as he grabbed some gauze out of one of his pockets and used it to clean off the surface of the wound. While the knife had gotten him good, it hadn't gone very deep. The wound itself wasn't anything major, meaning it would be a simple fix. Ignoring the sounds of yelling and things crashing from the fight behind him, Tommy placed his hand over the stab wound and shut his eyes. His hands never glowed gold again, like they had the night he saved Wilbur. It had gone back to his normal orange, like the whole revival thing had never happened. Although, if you asked Tommy, his post-healing headaches had gotten just a bit worse since that night. It wasn't anything he couldn't deal with, but it was still a pain in the ass all the same. By the time Tommy pulled his hands away, a dull throbbing had already made itself known behind his eyes. He leaned back against the railing next to Jack, taking out some extra gauze from his pocket to wipe his hands on. You good, Tommy? Jack asked quietly, resting a hand on his shoulder. Tommy gave him a weak thumbs up, keeping his eyes shut for a moment so he could get his bearings. All right, you stay here. I'm going to hop back in the fight, Jack told him. Sounds good, Tommy muttered, wincing when the simple act of speaking caused another spike of pain to flash through his skull. He listened at Jack's footsteps fading as Thanatos rejoined the fight. Tommy simply took a few deep breaths, letting the pain and nausea roll through him because he knew it would fade to something manageable in a few minutes. Distantly, there was the sound of something exploding 
and Tommy grinned, knowing that was almost certainly Tubbo's doing. Suddenly, there was the sound of footsteps beside him. Opening his eyes, Tommy leapt back when he saw Supreme running straight for him. What the hell? Tommy asked, pressing against the railing. Supreme, who Tommy could see was dragging a dazed-looking rewind next to him, glanced up and gave him a small wave. Hey there. You don't mind if I uh, use this spot to heal him, do you? Blinking, Tommy nodded. Supreme was a healer like him. Logically, Tommy had nothing to fear from the hero. Is that Apollo? Rewind asked in a slurred voice. Yeah, yeah that's him. him. Supreme confirmed, tugging up the edge of Rewind's charred sweatshirt to reveal a small cluster of burns on his side. Yep, definitely Tubbo's doing. Hi, Apollo. Ouch! Rewind said blindly waving at him, but cutting himself off when Supreme pressed two fingers on the burns. Sorry, Sorry about that. Supreme apologized. I'll make this quick. Tommy's eyes widened, his curiosity overriding the pain from his headache. He'd never gotten the chance to actually see how another healer's powers worked, and he wondered how similar it was to his own. Without thinking, Tommy leaned over to get a better look. Dark brown eyes met his own, and Tommy flushed, immediately pulling back. Shit, sorry, I was just- You can watch if you want. Supreme offered, and although Tommy couldn't see his mouth under the red and yellow balaclava he wore, he had the sense he was smiling all the same. If that's okay. Tommy said, and when Supreme nodded, he let out a sigh of relief. Tommy leaned over again, looking down at the hands Supreme had resting on Rewind's sides. One hand, Tommy quickly realized, was a prosthetic. It was just being used to hold up the edge of Rewind's burned sweatshirt, but otherwise wasn't doing much. Then Supreme used his other hand to start massaging the skin around the burn. There was no glowing, but it was like watching magic happen all the same. When Supreme swiped his thumb over the burns, Tommy saw the blistered skin disappear, like an eraser had been used on it. Rewind immediately relaxed. Supreme continued massaging the rest of the burns, each one disappearing with just a brush of his hands. Tommy was glad he had his mask on, because if he wasn't, Supreme would have been able to see his mouth hanging wide open in shock. That's so cool! Tommy exclaimed once Supreme had healed the last burn, tugging Rewind's blackened sweatshirt back down. Are yours different? Supreme asked leaning back against the railing next to Tommy. Also, rewind, just wait a minute and then you're good to go. Yeah, they are. When I heal, my hands get all glowy and hot, and just heals the wounds like that. Tommy explained, looking over his own calloused palms. That's so interesting, Supreme muttered, furrowing his brows. There was a moment of silence, and then Supreme lifted his head, holding out a hand for Tommy to shake. I don't think we've officially met. I'm sure you know who I am, but I'm Supreme. Snorting, Tommy took the offered hand. Apollo, but you knew that already. Before Supreme could respond, there was another explosion sound, and Tommy winced as it sent another pang through his head. Distantly, Tommy registered rewind getting up and rejoining the fight. Are you okay? Supreme then asked, his dark eyes bright with concern. I'm fine, Tommy said, waving off his worry. Just post-healing headache, I'm sure you know how it is. Supreme sighed. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't get headaches, but after I have to heal something big, my hands will ache for days. Even the one that's a fake. He said, laughing a bit, as he held up the prosthetic hand. Oh man, that's shit. Tommy said, trying to give Supreme a sympathetic look, even with half of his face hidden by the mask. Yeah, you get used to it. And damn if Tommy hadn't heard that one before. But actually, do you mind if I try something? Frowning, Tommy eyed the hand Supreme was reaching towards him. Like what? I'm usually really good for headaches, Supreme told him. He held his hand in the air between them, waiting for Tommy to give him the go-ahead. While Tommy knew letting a hero use his powers on Tommy probably wasn't the best idea, there was also something about Supreme that just made him very easy to trust. 
Maybe it was his kind voice. Or maybe it was the quiet solidarity they had with one another. They may have been on opposite sides, but they weren't enemies. They were healers. Or maybe it was just that his headache was really fucking annoying, and Tommy would do anything for some kind of remedy. Either way, Tommy found himself leaning forward. Supreme brought his hand up to Tommy's temple and began to massage small circles into the skin. For a beat, nothing happened. Then, all at once, a surge of warmth radiated from Supreme's thumb and into Tommy's head. He immediately relaxed into the touch, slumping against the railing as sweet relief swept over him. The warmth flooded through his head, slowing the throbbing down until it disappeared completely. A few seconds passed, and then Supreme pulled his hand away. The warmth faded, and Tommy waited for the headache to return. But it didn't. Holy shit, you fixed it! Tommy exclaimed. Supreme laughed. Glad Glad I could help. Apollo, we got it! Wilbur's voice suddenly called out, drawing both healers' attention back to the fight. Looking out onto the roof, Tommy could see that Nikki and Jack had already disappeared from the fight. Techno was pinning Dream to a wall, while Tubbo just stared down Rewind and 404, neither of whom were moving. And Wilbur, in all his dramatic glory, was holding up the prize of the evening, some kind of strange technology Sam had built for the heroes a while back that he wanted the Syndicate to use. Tommy had no idea what it did, and he really didn't care to know. But it seemed like that was the signal to get going. It was nice meeting you. Tommy told Supreme as he jumped to his feet, new energy racing through his veins. Nice meeting you too, man, Supreme called back, already rushing back to his own side. I'll I'll see you around. See ya, Tommy waved. As soon as he was back by Wilbur, his brother wrapped an arm around his shoulders and pulled him close. Then, Techno shoved Dream to the ground and hurried back over with Tubbo and Ronbu. Although Dream was yelling something in protest, as soon as Rambu reached the group, they all joined hands. Then, the roof disappeared, and Tommy knew they were safe for the night. What does that thing do, anyway? Tommy asked as he sat on Wilbur's bed, tossing the strange device up and down in his hands. Wilbur, who was propped up against his pillows with his guitar on his lap, shrugged. According to Sam, it's supposed to be able to shut someone's powers off temporarily but he never managed to perfect the design before he left the Hero Committee. Tommy immediately stopped tossing the device. Holy shit. If the heroes had that kind of tech, it would be disastrous, I know. Wilbur said, his voice solemn. Which is why we wanted to get it back, before they could figure out how to get it working. Yeah, that was a no-brainer. If the heroes had a way of shutting villains' powers off, they would be dead. All of them. It would be a nightmare scenario. Are you planning on getting it working again, though? Tommy then asked, his voice much smaller than he expected it to be. Just like it would be disastrous for the heroes to have that kind of technology, Tommy could see the same thing happening if the villains were able to take advantage of that for themselves. I... I don't know. Wilbur admitted. I don't think Phil wants to use it but he wants Sam to work on it again. Probably as a just-in-case type of thing. Tommy gulped. Do you believe him? Wilbur shrugged, keeping his eyes on his lap. I'm not sure. On the one hand, Tommy knew he should probably be more worried about the fact that neither of them seemed to be sure of what their father's plan was for this technology. But at the same time, Tommy couldn't bring himself to be all that upset about it, He trusted Phil to know when a dirty trick was too dirty. Setting the device on Wilbur's nightstand, Tommy huffed as he flopped back onto the bed, resting his head next to Wilbur's side. You know, I talked to Supreme tonight. Wilbur, who had gone back to tuning his guitar, raised an eyebrow. You did? Tommy nodded. Yeah, he's a really nice person. Plus, he was actually able to fix my headache after I healed Jack. Seriously? Wilbur questioned. Yep. His powers work different than mine, which I got to see when he healed Rewind. Tommy told him, grinning at the memory. It's so fucking cool. 
I'd love to figure out how our powers actually work on, like, a scientific level. Wilbur snorted and reached a hand out to ruffle Tommy's hair. You're such a fucking nerd. Oi, I'm not a nerd, Tommy protested. You're literally studying biology in college. You're the most stereotypical nerd there is, Wilbur teased. Fuck off, dipshit. If anything, you're the nerd, you goddamn theater kid. Tommy huffed, slapping Wilbur's hand away. Wilbur frowned. How did you know I did theater in high school? Snorting, Tommy rolled over so his head was pressed against Wilbur's side. Lucky guess. Rolling his eyes, Wilbur resumed his guitar tuning. A comfortable silence fell between them. Tommy listening to the different strings being plucked as Wilbur tried to test if they sounded right. It was relaxing. A familiar routine they developed all the way back when Tommy was first staying at the house. It felt like years ago now, even though it hadn't even been a year since he saved Siren's life. So much had changed since then. Everything in Tommy's life was different. All because he took one look at a supervillain bleeding out in an alleyway and decided that no one deserved to die like that. Do you ever think of dying it? Wilbur asked out of the blue, snapping Tommy out of his thoughts. Blinking open his eyes, Tommy frowned when he saw Wilbur twirling his finger around the white streak in his own hair. No. Tommy immediately answered. I don't want to get rid of it. Why not? Wilbur asked, letting go of his own white streak and reaching down to grab Tommy's. Isn't it a bad memory for you? Tommy shrugged. I don't think of it like that. Then how do you think of it? Wilbur asked, being as gentle as possible as he tugged Tommy's hair. I think of it as a reminder, Tommy told him, letting his eyes slip shut again. It reminds me that you're alive but it also reminds me just of my family in general. How close I came to losing you guys, but didn't. There was a moment of silence. Tommy heard Wilbur sniffle. I think you just like that we match. Wilbur teased, although his voice was thick. You want to look like Big Brother Wilby. Oh, fuck off. Tommy snorted, pressing himself into Wilbur's side. I don't want to look like you at all because you're ugly as shit. It was a lie, and both Wilbur and Tommy knew it. Maybe Tommy did like that he and Wilbur had matching white streaks. Maybe it made him feel like they were connected, or that it made them look more like brothers in some strange way. But of course, Tommy wasn't going to admit that out loud. Wilbur already had a big enough ego. He didn't need it to get any bigger. Well, I don't want to die mine, because it reminds me not to be fucking stupid. Wilbur told him after a few moments. I don't ever want to leave you guys again, and seeing the white reminds me of exactly why. Good, Tommy said, burying his face into Wilbur's sweater to shield his eyes from the lights. You're never leaving me again, you stupid fuck. Don't worry, Toms. I've learned my lesson about being a martyr. Wilbur reassured him. Another silence fell over the two. Wilbur went back to tuning his guitar. Everything was warm and soft right now. The warm glow of the fairy lights, the soft strumming of Wilbur's guitar strings. As the minutes passed, Tommy felt sleep begin to creep up on him like an old friend. What do you want me to sing? Wilbur then asked after a few minutes. Anything, Tommy mumbled. Wilbur let out a soft chuckle at Tommy's slurred voice. We'll make it a quick one. He started to strum the chords, and Tommy smiled as he recognized a song Wilbur had played for him before. Then, Wilbur began to sing. The road to my home is horizons, my target five feet from me, bring my mother loose sight of the streets and Right before sleep dragged Tommy under, he smiled into his brother's sweater, and then he was out like a light.